Good morning. Boy, that ought to wake you up. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you here in the house of the Lord this morning. We appreciate each and every one of your attendance and all our guests and visitors. We, we really welcome you and we hope you'll come back and visit with us. Uh, have a few announcements here this morning. We have a very, very important council meeting today at 5.30 in the celebration room, right out here. Uh, some major things are going to be uh, discussed and voted on, so uh, it is an open meeting. Uh, however, I would really urge people who are members of the, the church council to be there. Uh, the Bell Choir is going to <clears throat> have a rehearsal uh, on the 19th at 5.15 in the Bell Room. And, of course, we've got Wednesday Night Live for children and youth. Uh, we've got to look at my notes here. The, on uh, next Sunday, uh, from 2 to 4, there are Come and Go Church wedding shower for Katie and Tino here in Joy Hall. So we sure put that on your calendar. Uh, also, put on your calendar, May uh, 7th and 8th, uh, there is a daddy-daughter dance. Now, it's not May 7th and 8th, it's one of those dates, is that correct? Both oh, both days, okay. Going to dance over two days work. You'll get good and get your exercise. But it'll be here in Joy Hall, and uh, if anyone would be willing to uh, help on that, uh, please uh, contact the church office and Valerie and uh, let us know. Uh, I don't see anything else on my list. Anyone have anything to announce? Are y'all awake? <laughs> well, if not, let's all stand and, and greet and wave and uh, people on the video. Love left with me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me.
may be seated as the children come up for the children's moment. Good morning, guys. Hey, Maddie, come sit over here, sweetie. We're going to have to get through it. I want you to do this. That's enough. All right. Good morning, guys. How are y'all doing this morning? Good. Glad y'all are awake. Sometimes I wonder, but I'm glad that y'all are awake. So I know that y'all's parents and there are people in your lives that love you very much because there are times that maybe you're going crazy at the back of the church right before the children's sermon and um, your parents have to be really patient, like me. And maybe there are times that your parents have to take you super early to weight training class or have to watch Jurassic Park over and over and over again. Or maybe they just give you hugs, right? So there are all kinds of ways that your parents show you that you love them or that they love you. And there are ways that they show you show them that you love them also. Well... Well, you know, we're also children of God, and God shows us that he loves us also by doing things for us, by being there for us, by listening to us, and by dying on the cross for us. And we should listen to our parents, right, guys? Right? Do we always do that? Yeah, yeah, we always do that, right? Well, it's the same thing with God. God wants us to listen to them, and, you know, sometimes we don't always do the things that our parents want us to do, and that's just life, but we should always strive to listen to God, and one of the things that God calls us to do is to be pure, so I'm going to have my two assistants come up right now, Jackson and Lily, and they have two glasses of water, and they're each going to hold one, and so... Jackson, why don't you take the first cup of water? That looks really yummy, doesn't it? It's nice and clear. Would y'all want to drink that? Yeah, y'all out there could answer too, okay? Do y'all want to drink that? Yeah, it looks pretty clear, you know. It probably came from the faucet, so maybe it's not like Dasani or anything, but, you know, it didn't come from the creek. So, yeah, I'd probably drink that. Now, Lily, how about your glass of water? Let's check that out. Why don't you go ahead and um, put the dirt in it, and we'll see what happens. Go ahead. All right. Oh, that looks yummy. Do y'all want that water? Yeah? Cedar says he wants that water. Cedar, I don't think you'd really want it. So that dirt represents our sin. And so God actually wants us to be pure like this. And so it's not something that's easy that can happen overnight. It's something that we have to work with God so that we can constantly become purer and purer like this water. So guys, go ahead and bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Lord, please be with us this week. Please help us to join with you in living a pure life, listening to you, and becoming one with you every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thank you to my assistants. Let's give them a round of applause. All right, and I've got some candy up here for you too. One announcement I forgot to make. Uh, Keith uh, is going to have a procedure tomorrow morning down at, uh, in the Houston area. He's going to have a heart cath, and I think from that air, uh, uh, study, maybe they will find out what he is causing some of his problems. So I uh, just wanted to make sure we lift him up in prayer. I need to stand over here. 
Shall we pray? Dear God, we confess our need for you today. We need your healing. We need your grace. We need hope restored. We need to be reminded that you work on behalf of those you love constantly, powerfully, completely. Forgive us for trying to fix our situations all on our own. Forgive us for running all different directions and spinning our wheels to find help when true help and healing must be found first in you. Forgive us for forgetting how much we need you above everyone and everything else. We come to you and bring you the places we are hurting. You see where no one else is able to fully see or understand. You know the pain we've carried, the burdens, the cares. You know where we need to be set free. We ask for your healing and grace to cover every broken place, every wound, every heartache. Thank you that you are able to do far more than we could ever imagine. Thank you for your mighty power that acts on behalf of your children. We reach out to you and know that you are restoring and redeeming every place of difficulty, every battle for your greater glory. Thank you that you will never waste our pain and suffering. We love you, Lord, and we need you today. Lord, we lift up Pastor Keith and we pray, Lord, that you would work through the doctors and the nurses and all who attend to him to, to help him. And Lord, we pray for your healing touch, and we also pray for Tina and the rest of the family that you would give them the strength and comfort they need as well at this time. We're praying, Lord, for your healing touch and for your, for your help. And Lord, as we come here this morning, we each have needs as well, and we're thankful, Lord, you know us, you know exactly what we need, right when we need it. And so, Lord, we lift ourselves up to you and ask you to, to speak to us, to, to heal us, to help us, to give us your grace. And Lord, we're thankful that we can come to this place and worship you as a family. We are your family, and we're thankful that we are your children. And Lord, uh, we're thankful for all these things in the name of him who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
choir is going to sing for you this morning is a new hymn that a friend of mine by the name of Richard Nichols has written. And um, he's written several wonderful hymns. This one is called The Love of Christ. And I want to read the, um, the chorus part here. It says, move your church to be like you. Help us do what you would do. Move your church to love like Christ. Help us welcome the despised. And move your church with gospel truth. Help us bring the lost to you. As we talk about the love of Christ has for us, may we be the love of Christ in the world today, that you would move our church, this church right here, to be more and more like Christ every single day. Thank you for uh, having us back again this week. We're sorry uh, that about Keith uh, and his problems, but uh, thankful for the opportunity to be here. And uh, uh, I know he'll he'll pull through. He's too ornery to be sick, you know. And we we love he, uh, Kurt, Keith and Tina. Uh, I'd like to share with you from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. 
See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we thank you for this time together, and we're thankful for your Holy Spirit that ministers your word to our hearts. And Lord, I pray that you would keep me out of your way. Bless down Christ's name. Amen. One of our most basic needs as human beings is to be loved. There was a popular song that came out in the late 1960s whose lyrics reflected this worldwide longing. What the world needs now is love. But you know, God has met this need in Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus, a new kind of love is possible and is at work in our world. Notice, first of all, the Father's love. God loves us. When Martin Luther's translation of the Bible was being printed, a, a piece of type fell on the floor. The printer's daughter later found the section which said, For God so loved the world that he gave. Excitedly, she showed it to her mother. But her mother said that it didn't make any sense. Gave what? The girl responded, oh, mama, it doesn't matter. If God loves me enough to give me anything, I don't have to be afraid of him. You know, many people think of God as harsh, judgmental, or indifferent toward the world. But the truth is, God is love. God loves us. But how do we know God loves us? Well, we find out in 1 John 4, 9 and 10. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. The cross is God's bold demonstration of his love for us. Because he loved us, he sent his only begotten son to suffer the shame and agony of the crucifixion. Because he loved us, he made a bridge across the gulf of sin that separated us from him. Humorist and former publisher Bennett Cerf Told, once told a story of an eight-year-old girl in a Pennsylvania orphanage. She was painfully shy, unattractive, and generally shunned by the other children. The orphanage directors regarded her as a problem child. A rule of the home required the director's approval of any written communication before, uh, prior to mailing. One afternoon, the, the girl was seen hiding a letter in the branches of a tree that hung over the wall. The letter was seized and opened. It read, to anybody who finds this, I love you. Likewise, our Lord Jesus was driven by a loveless world outside the city wall. He hung on a cross. A message from God to the world. I love you. Notice secondly the, exchange, the example of Christ. Christ's love is inclusive 
and active. We are to live out a pattern of Christ's love. 1 John 3.16 says, this is how we know what love is. How do we know? By considering the example of Christ, the perfect pattern of love. The way to respond to others is to walk in his steps. His love included all people and was active in their lives. You know, Jesus faced many untouchables in his day. For instance, no one wanted to touch the lepers. When they went out in public, they cried out, unclean, unclean, so people could avoid them. But Jesus went out of his way to touch the lepers. They needed his love. The Samaritans were also considered to be social uh, untouchables. Jesus ministered to a Samaritan woman and honored every Samaritan in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus had fellowship with religious untouchables, people who did not meticulously keep the law and were regarded as ceremonially unclean. Jesus saw each person as valuable and full of potential. That kind of love is the pattern for every Christian. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. That's what 1 John 4.11 says. And I wonder, can this love be seen in us day to day? We may ask, well, who is my brother? Who is my sister? Who is my neighbor? When in love we seek people in need, we discover our brother or sister, don't we? We naturally tend to love those who, who uh, love us and who share our ideals, our values. Too often we demand change before we will love. But agape love includes everyone and actively seeks to share Christ's love with them. Christ's love is inclusive and active. And Christ's love is exclusive and eternal. The love of Christ is neither gullible nor naive. If we love God who is holy, we cannot love the things that are against Christ. 1 John 2, 15 and 16 says... Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world, for all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. Yes, Christ's love is exclusive. Christ's love is also eternal. 1 John 2.17 says, Those who do the will of God live forever. Those who receive Christ by repentance and faith begin to, do, uh, begin to do God's will and become united with his love. Paul affirmed in Romans 8.39 that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I just love the first verse of the hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure. That he should give his only son. To make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Probably no word in our vocabulary is as misunderstood as the word love. 
You know, we apply it to food sometimes and clothing tastes, to romantic relationships, and to religious experiences. One day, a four-year-old girl asked her father, Daddy, how do you spell love? He told her the four letters, which she proudly printed on a special note to those she loved. But you know, the spelling of our love of love in our life is infinitely more complex. In Christ, the true meaning is available to us, and the world desperately needs his love. The question is, can those in the world see Christ's love in us? Shall we pray? Thank you, God, for your love, especially as shown to us in the life, death, and resurrection of your only Son, Jesus Christ. May we, if we haven't done so already, ask you to forgive us our sins. And may we invite you to come and live in our hearts and in our lives. And may we share your love with others by what we say and how we live. We ask this all in Christ's name. And everyone said, Amen. Say
Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.